Having discussed the topic of carbon electrophiles in quite some detail in the previous lessons, we now move to a systematic exploration of carbon nucleophiles. So just to remind you, any carbon atom with a lone pair can act as a nucleophile, but in order to get a carbon atom with a lone pair, it's going to have a negative charge. So what I'd like to start doing is reviewing the carbon nucleophiles that have already been introduced up to this point in the course. So first we have cyanide ion, CN minus. This has a lone pair on both the carbon and the nitrogen, but it is the one on the carbon that is more nucleophilic. Secondly, we have the alkyne anion, C triple bond CH minus. Thirdly, we have the simple enolate, so that's when you have a minus charge on a carbon that is next to a carbonyl group. And we looked at this extensively in the context of resonance structures in which we saw how this negative charge is resonance stabilized. And then fourthly, we have what I call the double enolate, where you have the minus charge on a carbon that is between two carbonyl groups, which gives you the ability for stabilization of the minus charge with yet an additional resonance structure. So in the remainder of this lesson, I just want to go over some sample reactions. We have now looked at three kinds of carbon electrophiles. We've looked at the alkyl halide, we've looked at the carbonyl group, and we've looked at the epoxide. We already know about four classes of carbon nucleophiles, so now we're going to just mix and match nucleophile and electrophile and look at four carbon-carbon bond forming, four times three or twelve carbon-carbon bond forming reactions that you already know based on stuff we have seen in earlier lessons. Okay, so starting with alkyl halides as electrophiles, if an alkyl halide, in this case propyl bromide, reacts with cyanide as a nucleophile, you get the following structure. And in all of these structures, the nucleophilic piece is in blue, and the new carbon-carbon bond that is being formed is in red. In this structure, the three carbons from the alkyl halide that ends up in the final product are indicated in green. So note that you are forming the new carbon-carbon bond in red to the carbon that previously contained the leaving group. This should be fairly familiar to you by this point, having studied nucleophilic substitution reactions extensively. Secondly, we can use the alkyne anion and react it in the exact same way as cyanide ion and get a very similar product, except we have a hydrogen instead, carbon and hydrogen instead of a nitrogen. The enolate reacting with an alkyl halide forms a new carbon-carbon bond, once again between the carbon next to the carbonyl, which we call the alpha carbon, and then the terminal carbon of the propyl group. And then finally, for the double enolate, any alkyl halide reacts by simply sticking that number of carbons on the carbon in between the two carbonyl groups. So we now have a propyl group coming off that central carbon. If we use carbonyl groups as electrophiles, the product is an alcohol. And looking at this carefully, the new carbon-carbon bond is still in red, and then the remaining atoms, carbon-carbon-oxygen from the carbonyl group, are indicated in black. So whether you have a nitrile that gives you a CN bound to the carbon that contains the OH in the product, an alkyne anion puts a carbon-carbon triple bond bound to that carbon that was previously the carbonyl carbon. An enolate binds the alpha carbon to the carbonyl group to that carbon that was previously a carbonyl carbon that's now an OH. And then the double enolate works the same way. You put the same two carbons and an OH attached 
to the central carbon between the two carbonyl groups. The reaction involving an enolate is actually a very important reaction. It's called the aldol condensation, and that is a reaction that will be an extensive series of lessons in the second semester of organic chemistry. So note in all of these cases, the product is an alcohol because you are adding to the carbon-oxygen pi bond, breaking that CO pi bond, making it a single bond, and then putting a hydrogen in the end of the reaction onto the oxygen. Finally, if we use epoxides as electrophiles, we also get alcohols but look at the difference in connectivity. With an epoxide as an electrophile, the red bond, the new carbon-carbon bond, is not made to the carbon that has the OH, but rather it is made to the carbon next to the carbon that has the OH. Because when you ring open an epoxide, the carbon that gets attacked is not the same carbon that ends up with the OH at the end. The carbon that gets, the, gets attacked by the nucleophile loses its bond to oxygen. Okay, so cyanide ion, and in this case we have an unsymmetrical epoxide. I'm just making this as general as possible. So with an unsymmetrical epoxide, we're going to attack the less substituted epoxide carbon. So you form the new bond, carbon-carbon bond indicated in red, and then the epoxide carbon with the methyl on it is the one that's going to have the OH in the end. Alkyne anions react exactly the same way as cyanide ion does, opening up the epoxide. All these reactions, of course, are under basic conditions because these carbon nucleophiles are bases. With the enolate, we can form a new carbon-carbon bond. Now, instead of Compare this to the aldol reaction, where in that case the OH is beta to the carbonyl. In this case, the OH is now gamma to the carbonyl. It is three carbons away. And then finally, the similar reaction takes place with the double enolate, putting a three carbon fragment with an OH on the, on the central carbon of that three carbon fragment attached to the central carbon of the diketone. So what I want you to do is look at these patterns carefully because what I'm going to ask you to do in future lessons and on problems is given a final product, tell me what starting materials you would need to put together to make this product. So you really need to understand the details of exactly where the carbon-carbon bond goes and which electrophile you need to put a carbon-carbon bond in each different place. Use an alkyl halide if there's no OH present. You use a carbonyl group if you need to form a carbon-carbon bond to the carbon that has the OH. And you use an epoxide if you need to form a carbon-carbon bond to the carbon next to the one that has the OH. Okay, so in the next lesson, we're going to look at the general characteristics of the four carbon nucleophiles that you have met already, how they are generated, and then from that analysis, come to the conclusion that we need a more general carbon nucleophile, which we will get to in the lesson after now.